the perfect high concept comedic slasher, and it's still Jennifer Aniston's best film to date. Luke Y. Thompson, New York Times. You want burgers? I don't. Some chicken? And ribs? I top of the morning to ya. Stop. I'm the leprechaun. No. No? No. Why no? Because <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. You're a little German Mexican kid. <laughs> okay. Not a leprechaun. Okay, you got me there. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to Night of the Horror File. And uh, again, if this is your <sighs> first episode... This is a podcast where I take a horror movie and make my wife watch it. You need to stop. The leprechaun. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't listen to this. <laughs> People are unsubscribing as we speak. But no, if you are just joining us, that's right. What are we watching this week? I'm guessing the leprechaun. That's right. We're watching the leprechaun. How'd you guess? Because <laughs> I watched it. Oh, yeah, you did watch it. <laughs> um. But seriously, yes, we watched The Leprechaun from 1993, actually filmed in 1991 and then released in 1993. Oh, okay. But, um, you know, sometimes on the show, we tackle revolutionary films like last week's Night of the Living Dead. But sometimes we just want to watch a leprechaun murder some folks in hilarious ways. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a low body count here for, you know. A murderous leprechaun. I feel like there needed to be more. I think there's four, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, a Leprechaun from 1993 was a film I most remember from the old video store days of our local video rental spot, which got bought out by Blockbuster years later. But <laughs> <laughs> they had a giant poster of this leprechaun peeking through a doorway. And if you've ever seen the photos or anything for this movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Creepy ass poster. Now, Leprechaun was the first in-house produced film by Trimark to be theatrically released. That's right. This was not direct <laughs> to video. Why are you laughing? Theatrically released. Theatrically. This is such a theatrical movie. The Leprechaun. No, mm. seriously. Seriously. Do you Stop. see though? Like. Some critics has said that it probably should have been direct to video. It feels like a direct to video. Oh movie. yeah, I would have loved to have been in the theater to watch this though. But um, so so let me set up <laughs> what you could have seen in theaters in January of 1993. Now this is movies that were in theaters. You had Matinee by Joe Dante, which is actually a great movie. Nobody talks about it too much. But Alive, the film where a soccer team eats the dead. I kind of made that sound like a horror movie, but it really was. And it's actually about the uh, soccer team that gets lost in the, I don't know where in the mountains and they have to eat people to survive. Oh shit. Uh, yeah. It's actually a pretty good movie, but um, have you heard of any of these? I have heard of that. Yeah. You've I heard didn't know lot. it was called that, but I have heard of it. Yeah. Well, um, January has always been known as a dump month for film. Yes. I said dump. Now <laughs> a dump month is where a studio literally dumps a movie into a month that they feel isn't going to be, I don't know, groundbreaking or financially successful. That's because a lot of people see movies in December. Right. Um, I only know this from working at the movie theater. A lot of people during Thanksgiving and Christmas go to the movies with their exactly. families. Exactly. So it's not one of those things that's going to, you know, change the world or families aren't going to go see <laughs> fucking uh, these movies in theaters. So they get dumped in January. Now, recently, we've seen some really good movies starting to be released in January. So there's hope. But, well, they're all horror movies. Nothing else really good gets released in <laughs> January. But, so yes, our beloved little green guy here is a dump movie. Now, now that's not to say Leprechaun isn't just as good as any of the other movies we have shown here. In fact, <laughs> it's about on par. No, not, not really, but you know, I just find it really funny that last week we were talking about <laughs> the revolutionary and societal like changes that Night of the Living Dead brought. 
<laughs> this and then week, we watch the we're getting cons. drunk with Warwick Davis. But uh, are we getting drunk? Uh, so we can be. You, you want didn't a beer? Give me a cup. You want a beer? No, I want my wine. You want your wine? Yeah. Oh, we have drinks here in the studio, and Today. that's because we're technically. I mean, it's a little early, but we're celebrating St. Patty's Day as well. So, Hell yeah! I mean, you got to. It's the leprechaun and. Celebrating the fact that there's only one child here <laughs> and she's the oldest and she likes to be left alone. We got babysitters. Kind of. Not really. They're Pretty not amazing. Really babysitters. <sighs> True. They're, they're my parents. But. <laughs> <laughs> but so, happy birthday to our three year old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because this comes out on his birthday. Oh, it does. Doesn't it? Yeah. That's amazing. We have children, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. Someone allowed us to have children. But. <laughs> Someone allowed us. But yeah, we're drinking in celebration. So if you have a drink or want a drink, or if you're at work, don't drink. But, you know, if you are drinking, hide it real well. We don't want you to get fired. And don't drink and drive. There we go. I'm going to pour myself a big old mug of frosty be Oh, shit. I'm pouring it wrong. Oh, that's mostly head. That's the first <laughs> time I've ever said that, foam. and it's been bad. <laughs> that's mostly it. Um, <laughs> uh, so... Like I said, the Leprechaun isn't <laughs> a bad movie. It's definitely not. In fact, on a budget of less than a million do dollars, Leprechaun made eight point six million back. Thank goodness. <laughs> so this was a success. It's a so bad it's good movie. If I could sum <laughs> it all up. Now, director Mark Jones had a career writing television shows like Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, and The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo. Haven't heard of any of these, huh? No. <laughs> Your inquisitive look right now, <laughs> giving it away. Anyway, Mark wanted to make a full-length film and decided, like many do, a horror movie would be best. Mark was inspired by the Lucky Charms commercials of all things. Oh my gosh. And the leprechaun was born. Stop. I'm the leprechaun. No, you're not. No. No. Oh, uh, I'm sure everyone just taking bets right now is like, I wonder if she's going to hit him on, oh, on, I will. The, on the recording this time. Oh, I will. Oh, I already prepared for it. He put a table between us this time so that I couldn't. I can hear the foam <laughs> in the headphones. I told you that beer was mostly ahead. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm drinking into the very unprofessional of me. Anyway. You're fired. Let's dive into the leprechaun. Okay. So, you know. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, uh, Mark Jones has an interesting career, really. Uh, he's written for Scooby-Doo, oh. Mr. Magoo. Oh. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but here we are. Uh, Super Friends, Alf, and even directed an episode of Joe Bob's Drive-In Theater. Oh, so, well, kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, on top of The Leprechaun, he even wrote and directed 1995's Rumpelstiltskin, which is a horror movie no one remembers. <laughs> uh, weird film. Weird film. Weirder than The Leprechaun? Yeah. Very that's, weird. That's weird. It is. It, yeah. <laughs> It'll probably be on the show, though. <laughs> mm. Are you going to talk like that? Like the leprechaun? Yes. No, Rumpelstiltskin sounds a little different, so I'll do that voice. Please don't. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Hashtag yes, we want that. No. Anyway, <laughs> so the movie starts off with a leprechaun in a dungeon with a pot of gold. I don't know if this is a dungeon. It's just a really dark place. Probably the basement. <laughs> it's a leprechaun house. <laughs> oh, shit, 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 Oh, man, there goes all our Irish listeners. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm part Irish. It counts. No, you're not. I've been told I'm part Scottish. No, your dad Irish. said you were German. He said I was German? Okay, my mom said we're Irish. She lied. So who the fuck is telling the... I'm going to have to do one of those 21 of me. But then you have to spit in a cup, right? Yeah, you just like spit in this too. Oh, and we talked about this. I don't want anybody having my spit. Apparently, it's like a lot of spit. Damn, how much... Like... like the tubes are probably like this big. You and got a filthy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just that poor person having to work with all this weird spit coming in. <laughs> anyway. So like all good horror movies, there's um, someone driving. <laughs> wow. You're right. We do do a lot of these. I'm going to point this out every time now. <laughs> 
so they're driving in a limo to a house. A man gets out, and this man is Mr. O'Grady, and he is drunk, and his wife is pissed <laughs> because he took a limo, and she's like, we don't have the fucking money for this. I mean, she didn't say it that way, but they didn't have the fucking money for that. <laughs> And um, he's like, it's okay, we're rich. And he shows her this urn that he got. And she was like, you're supposed to bury your mother. I guess he went to his mom's funeral. And he smashes the urn. There's gold in it that he has taken from a leprechaun. And she's like, yeah, whatever. She's like mad. She's so (laughs) mad. She's like, I don't believe any of this. Well, yeah, if I came rolling up with gold and said, I stole it from a leprechaun. I hit him with my car, I did. I probably would stab you in the throat. Because <laughs> I'm really getting stabby right now. Oh, God, she's getting stabby everywhere. So <laughs> so we all know leprechaun lore, right? We're all familiar sure. with leprechaun lore. <laughs> a little fairy-related creature who hides his pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Do not carry... Don't... Bleh, words are hard. Do not compare a leprechaun to a fairy they are fairies though they're They're considered the grumpy offshoot of fairies they're considered they don't have wings the fairies that get disbanded from the regular fairies well good but 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 here's my problem (laughs) how the hell did this leprechaun get through customs i mean i know it's 1993 and the tsa wasn't prying mass cheeks apart but wouldn't (laughs) someone say something now now dan o'brien here is played by Shay Duffin, who had a, a few roles here and there. Uh, I think he was uh, tinned in a pub in 1997's Titanic, actually. Wait a second. Dan O'Brien? O'Grady? Oh, oh I fucked it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my bad. Anyway. <laughs> now, Dan here is from Ireland. So, why would he not expect the leprechaun to come for him? Wouldn't he know leprechaun lore? Don't steal their gold. Exactly. I, I, you know, we ask the tough questions here on Night of the Horror File. <laughs> we just don't have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> or the right answers. We have answers, though. So it's later on in the evening, and Mrs. O'Grady starts to hear a child singing. And she's, so she's looking around, like, trying to figure out what this, what the fuck's going on, because... Um, if I ain't got no children in the house and I hear a child singing, I'm going to freak the fuck out. You know, a lot of people are like, there's nothing more beautiful than a child singing. And I'm like, no, there's nothing more creepy than a child singing. Uh, if okay, you don't it depends, have any children. Right. And it depends on what time of the day they're singing. Because if it's in like at midnight and I hear a little kid singing, I don't care if it's our kids. Singing? Singing. Singing. Not singing. Sanging. Because we're from Oklahoma. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that shit's scary. And so she find, she traces the sound to a suitcase. She opens it because because a leprechaun's in there and he's saying, <laughs> open the... He says, I'm stuck in here. Open the suitcase, please. I can't breathe and <laughs> shit like that. Okay, see? How the hell did customs not catch a fucking leprechaun? I'm just saying. 9-11 wasn't an inside job, folks. It was leprechauns. I'm Alex Jones. Oh, you're getting fired. Alex Jones. It was the damn leprechauns. Oh, my God. Is that that what we do now? We just throw our papers around? That's right. Alex Jones. (laughs) I can't do it. That guy's such a fucking asshole. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) the leprechaun pushes her down the stairs and this kills her. See, even the leprechaun knows the dangers of stairs. And he asks uh, Mr. O'Grady where his gold is. Mr. O'Grady's still drunk. And he stumbles into the bedroom and gets a gun and a four-leaf clover. <laughs> he shoots at the leprechaun, but he runs off. And the man finds him in the basement and shoots him more. And then locks... Or he shoots him enough to uh, not kill him, but... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Where knocks he, him out. There you go. He knocks him out. He knocked out a leprechaun. Oh my god! <laughs> this voice is gonna keep going all I night. I can't do all this. All night. I can't do it. It's all night. I can't do it. But you have to, my dear. <laughs> you have to put up with it because <laughs> we're doing the leprechaun. 
when we're having sex later. Oh. Uh, wait, are we gonna have sex later? No, I don't never know. mind. Do I changed to do that voice. I changed my mind. No. Oh, oh, shit. Hi, hi. oh here it comes. Hi, Michelle. All right. Oh. Okay, we're definitely not having sex later. <laughs> oh, okay, moving on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So. Anyway, I'm not done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. So he puts them in a storage crate and he puts the clover on the crate so that he can't get out and then nails it shut and pours gas on it for some reason and then just takes his wife upstairs and somehow the leprechaun telepathically kills him. Well, doesn't kill him. No, I, I OK, I, I think he just has a stroke. Is what happens because you know later on there's a scene, but because old Dan will make one more appearance later in the one of the funniest scenes I think I've ever seen in a horror movie, which is later on. That's why I think it, it pretty much just has a stroke or something. So can you tell me about this four leaf clover? Do you know about this because I've never heard this before? Well, I'll, I'll explain it later. Oh, it's coming up. We'll get to that. But uh, we will get to that. <laughs> So while we don't see him super clearly yet, Warwick Davis plays the titular leprechaun. Uh, Warwick, as most of us know, is a legend among little people actors, having tons of roles, uh, lots. Um, even uh, I think he made his uh, big screen debut as uh, Wicket the Ewok in Return of the Jedi. Um, in fact, George Lucas, I, I think, actually uh, helped he had to give him a pass because George Lucas had him under contract to be in this movie. Oh, Warwick Davis had a lot of strings pulled for him. Uh, Dan Quayle at the time pulled some strings <laughs> to get his uh, work visa through because he he's British. Well, I mean, I'm sure that a little person in Hollywood is in high demand. Oh, definitely. Especially uh, Warwick Davis. He's had like tons of roles. Is that what we call them? Little people? Yes. That okay. is the proper term. Okay. Uh, now, he had hit a dry spell around this time. Uh, prior to this, he played uh, Willow in 19, or eight, 1988 Willow. I don't <laughs> Um, but Warwick was excited to play against type here as a villain. And honestly, as we will see... In the much later sequels, the Leprechaun just doesn't feel the same without him, honestly. Um, it was Warwick's idea to have the comedy in this film. Um, and that's why I always say Robert England will always be Freddy and Warwick Davis will always be the Leprechaun. I agree. I agree. So 10 years later, and a dad and his daughter are driving, and this would be Tori and JD, and they get to this house that... The, the O'Grady's had died in. Right. And they are in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. But we will in, get to that. They say, because she's complaining that they're in New Mexico and she's not in um, Hollywood. <laughs> and the daughter is Baratti. Oh, my She God. is pissed to be there. She's an L.A. girl and she wants a nicer place to stay. She wants... She decides she's going to stay at a hotel. She decides that she wants to stay at a hotel because they're walking around this house and it's old and dusty. Nobody's lived there for a long time and they're going to have to fix it up. And the spiders. And the spiders. Um, and by the way, this woman is Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Uh, now, everyone. Everyone. Take a minute here and listen to me. Not that you're doing anything else while you're listening to this podcast, but <laughs> this is important because this will not be the last or the first time I will say this on this program. But every actor gets their start in horror. Every A-list celebrity has a horror film out there they don't talk about. And Jennifer <laughs> Aniston has Leprechaun. <laughs> Now, Aniston was an unknown at the time, uh, since Friends wouldn't premiere till the following year, actually. Uh, this was also pre-nose job, as you can see, <laughs> which we don't shame anybody who gets plastic surgery here on the show. But, you know, you do you people. Um, Mark Jones was very impressed with Aniston and he fought kind of hard to get her cast in this film. Now, I say that with a grain of salt because everyone the producers and everyone has said they fought hard to get Aniston in this film. And I think it's just because it's Jennifer Aniston now. So they want to be like, oh, no, I gave her her first kick. But moving on. <laughs> so um, 
So why many don't embrace their horror roots, I'll never know, honestly. It's funny. I think George Clooney is the only one who just kind of giggles and says, <laughs> yeah, that was my first. He had a few first horror movie roles, and we will get to them in the future. But Oh, I need to watch these. Oh, yeah. He's... Uh, hmm. I think George Clooney has always been a snack, but anyway. Uh, and he just gets snackier by the day. <laughs> he ages like a fine wine. But mm. honest, honestly, Jennifer Aniston... <laughs> And Warwick really carry this film. Like those are the two, you know, that's yeah. really stick out. In fact, it was funny because Jennifer Aniston kind of, she's not too mean about it, but she kind of is like, oh yeah, that was a mistake. You know, stuff like that. Even though this was her first gig, it's okay. I don't think it was a mistake. No, exactly. In fact, you can see glimpses of how her acting is going to blossom in later years when you watch this film. But, right. And I just don't understand that because I could almost bet you if she didn't do this she probably wouldn't have gotten friends maybe not i don't know not that this was some like revolutionary movie or whatever but you know things fall in place for a reason honestly i've always said you know whatever gets you into the door exactly you know, as long as you're not having to suck someone's dick you know go right. for it take the job right. but um even warwick davis it was funny years later i think this was like three years ago he was like you know uh because he loves these movies <laughs> Uh, but he's like, you know, she she shouldn't have done that because you, you don't want to forget where you came from. Right. Because, you know, but it, yeah. So Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at pictures of her. But you say this is pre nose job, but. Uh, OK, OK. I can't um, tell. I was just kind of messing around, really. Uh, it was not that big of a difference. It's probably pre boob job. She had, did she have a boob job? I thought those were natural. I'm pretty sure that her boobs were pretty small in this movie. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, um, her nose, I think she just had some bridge correction is all she had. I'm going to correct didn't... your bridge with my what fist. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, this is when you get mad. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't when I'm talking oh, like this. I, no, it's because you've been talking like that. Oh, it's like fading in and out, too. It's like the worst Irish accent ever. That's because it's not an Irish accent. It's a leprechaun accent. <laughs> And there goes all of Ireland's subscriptions. I'm so sorry, people. <laughs> There's another beer. It's okay. We can blame it on the beer. What about every other time? What are we blaming it on? The beer. Stays in your system. Read that in a beer magazine. <laughs> so anyway, Tori, I almost called her Jennifer. <laughs> Tori, did you just spill that all over yourself? <laughs> yes, I did. Keep going. We're good. Don't look over here. <laughs> she goes outside because she's going to leave. She's going to go to a hotel, right? And she runs into this guy, um, Nathan, like literally runs into him. Yeah, yeah. And she made him spill his paint or paint thinner or whatever it was. And she tries to give him money. And he's like, what? <laughs> Why are you trying <laughs> to give me money for this? He's like, just help me clean it up. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to give me money Christ. for this. So they introduce each other or whatever. She's making a comment about how she's leaving. She's going to a hotel. And he's like, oh, you're just scared of the spiders because you're a girl. <laughs> and she's like, oh, fuck no. Now I really can't leave. <laughs> I mean, obviously she didn't say that, but and yeah, that's how I can. took it. <laughs> she has to stay. Plus he's hot. So you know, she Yes. So up. she definitely wants to say. Um, yes. So Nathan here is played by Ken Alant, and I'm probably mispronouncing it. Um, now, folks have seen him in April Fool's Day, or I think they've seen him in April Fool's Day. I don't know. He's one of the characters in it. And he's been in and out of movies and TV shows. Uh, he also co-founded United Film Organizations, LLC, which specialized in special effect driven action and adventure films, um, basically B movies. Uh, <laughs> The company was uh, the pioneer in desktop level computer effects and in independent action movie making. Like the movie Boa Constrictor. And we're talking like sci-fi level graphics. It's okay, though. They're entertaining in their own way. Now, uh, they made about three movies a year at one point. They were churning them out. He ended up selling the company to a German uh, production company and uh, made him a good amount of money to retire on. So now... Uh, I'm not sure what he does now. I, I didn't really go that deep into where this guy is, but, you know, he, he did some cool shit. That's awesome. He's making more money than I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So this is where we meet Alex. 
an Aussie. Alex is a preteen boy, ten, maybe eleven, and some okay kid acting here. Uh, this kid was in um, yeah. uh, "Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead" and a few other movies, but um, yeah, not annoying. Right, like this kid could have been a lot more annoying oh, than yeah. he is, but you know, it's good. <laughs> and then Ozzy is, uh, I don't know. He's, he's, I don't want to say slow because that's probably not a right thing to say, but. Ozzy's kind of like our Forrest Gump here. He's, he's not. So not I wouldn't say he's mentally challenged, but he's just simple. He's, he's a simple boa. He doesn't know a lot. Exactly. There you uh, go. He's really not that bad. <laughs> right. And even, uh, Ozzy could have been a lot more annoying than he is. Right. <laughs> he's actually right. kind of nice. <laughs> So they're at the house with Nathan because they are going to paint the house. And Alex kind of keeps Ozzy in check. Right. Like, it's almost like they're on the same level, like almost like they're the same age. But Ozzy knows that he's an adult and acts like a child, I guess I should say. And Alex just keeps him in line. Yeah, it's kind of like a real life version of Master and Blaster from Road Warrior. But <laughs> I have no clue what that is. Thunderdome, Mad Max. No, nope. don't look at me like that. See, that's why I'm saying eventually we're going to have to start an <laughs> offshoot of just action movies you've never seen. I'm going to make you watch all these action movies. No, thank you. <sighs> have I ever sat down and like, let's watch an action movie? No, not really. I can't think of the last action movie you watched with me. You fell asleep during Batman versus Superman, which no one is faulting you. <laughs> <laughs> so Tori goes to take Nathan a drink as a peace offering for offering him money i don't know anyway so she goes down to the basement where she's he's just at. trying to get laid okay let's not fault her oh, too I know, much i know but she goes down to the basement where he's at and it's uh all dirty and scary <laughs> nathan jumps out of nowhere and scares the crap out of her he's telling her about the o'grady's that used to live here and uh they decide that they're going to open this crate that's sitting there because they want to see what's inside of it. I'm thinking that's not probably a good idea. I don't know. I'd probably be the same way. There could be riches. I don't think so. Why is that where my mind always goes? I find a mystery box. It could be riches. After all the horror movies I've ever seen. Guys, riches. <laughs> there ain't no riches in that. There could be a pot of gold. She's going to kill me, people. There's not a pot of gold because there ain't no fucking rainbow. This is going to be the last episode because she's going to stab me with something. <laughs> it's not even going to get uploaded because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> ah, yes. So you got to let me live at least till I upload the episode. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, so our leprechaun is being held at bay by a four leaf clover. And I know you asked earlier. Why would the clover hurt him? So let's figure that out. Okay. A four-leaf clover. Now, these are leprechaun facts again, people. Four-leaf clover traditionally are known as the symbol of luck, right? Right. Um, very rare. In fact, you have to, you have about a one in a 10,000 chance of finding one. Now, each leaf on the three-leaf, the three-leaf clover stands for hope, love, and faith. The four-leaf clover introduces the leaf of luck. Now, there's also some Holy Trinity shit involved in there, but, you know, we won't get into that. Um, leprechauns traditionally are mischievous types of fairies that spend their time making shoes and hiding gold. Uh, story goes, if you capture a leprechaun, they grant you three wishes. Uh, there is a whole thing about leprechaun traps and whatnot, but again, that's there's a lot to go into. <laughs> anyway, these two things really don't have anything to do with each other, uh, other than <laughs> Ireland. But if you take the whole faith, love, and purity, good magic of the four-leaf clover, you could kill an evil leprechaun, I suppose, that's using green demon magic, I guess, you know? Green demon magic. I hate a leprechaun. Oh, my Jesus, you need to stop. <laughs> I just can't believe that I'm standing here with my husband, doing a podcast, talking about leprechauns. Yep. That was the weirdest tangent you've ever gone on. And how how did you explain any of that? How did I understand any? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, did I explain it? I'm done with you. Anyway, the four-leaf clover Can you hurts this? this leprechaun. 
No, I don't want to sign that. <laughs> oh, that's why you didn't bring the pins to your new desk. That's right. There's no pins in the studio. Oh, I will get a pin. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, here, I have an electronic copy. All you have to do is put your fingerprint on it. Leprechauns don't get divorced. That was a weird one. Leprechauns it is in don't and out. Married. It is in and out. My leprechaun accent is sucking. Good. Maybe you should stop. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> So, as they're about to open this crate, Ozzy yells from outside so they don't open it. They go outside. Ozzy is covered in paint. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. <laughs> Ozzy's great. But like it's I a said, little goofy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. You know, a lot of people complain when I talk to them about this movie. They're like, yeah, but Ozzy didn't need to exist. And I was like, oh, come on. He was funny. Oh, yeah. He was the I comedic relief. I had a good time with Ozzy. Oh, yeah. So uh, he goes in to wash off and he hears a kid singing. So he goes to check it out to see what's going on. As he approaches this crate in the basement where he's hearing this child asking to let him out, Ozzy knocks this floor leaf clover off the crate on accident that Mr. O'Grady left on there. 10 fucking years ago <laughs> that nobody has knocked off of you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the leprechaun busts through the crate and he asks Ozzy about his gold. Right. Okay. So uh, we got an Oklahoma native here. Uh, Mark Holton was born in Oklahoma City. Uh, Mark plays Ozzy. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> listeners may know him as Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I know you are, but what about? Anyway. Um, <laughs> I can't do a Pee Wee voice, but um, also Chubby from Teen Wolf and Teen Wolf 2. Yes, that character's name was Chubby. Nice. <sighs> and lots of TV appearances such as Seinfeld. But Mark also played serial killer John Wayne Gacy in another highly inaccurate serial killer movie that we've never watched or you've never watched. Why have we not watched it? Uh, we're going to have a serial killer a month coming up. I'm thinking in summer, but, you know, we'll get to that. <laughs> But Mark plays an actually he plays a pretty good Gacy, so it's worth hunting down to watch that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's okay. It's not great, but yeah. So, uh, Mark Holton, uh, Oklahoma native. I, I really enjoy when someone from our state is doing stuff, even if it's just playing Ozzy, yeah, <laughs> Leprechaun. Right. right. So Ozzy runs outside to tell them about this Leprechaun, but everybody's like. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, because he comes running out. There's a leprechaun. There's a leprechaun. They're like, what the hell? Uh, there's a leprechaun. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. So Nathan says that he'll go check it out just to be nice, even though he doesn't believe him. <laughs> so they all decide to go and they go down to the basement and the leprechaun is obviously gone. Right, right. But they hear something, and they're all looking around, all scared, and it was just a rat. Ah, jump scare rat. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I really want to do that sometime, just come busting out of some place. There's a leprechaun in there! <laughs> just come running out of the Walmart bathroom. There's a leprechaun! <laughs> just run out the doors. There's a leprechaun! Can you do that when I'm not around? <laughs> sure, <laughs> but who's going <laughs> to film it? Who's going to film it so our, our, our Twitter followers can see? And then somebody will call me a cuck or something. This is the problem. <laughs> oh, my God. You're still on that joke. It was funny. This is, see, this is the problem is you don't have any friends and I need you to have some friends. Yeah, no friends here. That can record you doing stupid shit so I don't have to. That's by choice. Maybe the children will film you. Hey, you signed the document when we first got married. I'm trying to get you to sign the other document. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get you to sign the other document. Oh, shit. Maybe there's like some flaw in our marriage license. No, it is airtight. I had two lawyers look at it. No, you did not. That's right. <laughs> two. No, you did not. Two. <laughs> no. Two lawyers. You don't even know two lawyers. Two lawyers. If anybody knows me, they know I lie about lawyers all the time just to fuck with people. <laughs> but I have lawyers now. <laughs> I have lawyers <laughs> because it's funny because, okay, when you say that to somebody, they get scared <laughs> and they fucking just shut up. So if you want somebody to shut up, just say you have a lawyer. 
You don't even have to threaten them. So like when you're at work, okay, this is an example. And someone says, oh no, you go into the break room and you say, Mm -hmm. man, I really want some coffee. And you go and there's no coffee. And the guy's like, sorry, man, there's no coffee. You're like, I'm getting a fucking lawyer. No, you could say, oh man, I might have to talk to my lawyer about that. I don't know. I don't know. And then they'll run out and get you coffee. It's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> it also makes you look like a fucking tea bag, but you know, if you don't care about people's perceptions, like I do, it, fuck it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to the leprechaun, everybody. We watched the leprechaun this week. <laughs> Can't you tell we're so enthused to talk about it? Oh, it's a, well, the, the problem is <laughs> this movie is great, but you got to watch it. Your voice made a weird noise. Yeah, it cracked there for a minute. What did I just hit puberty again? What the fuck? I thought that ended. It <laughs> comes not. back again? <laughs> I don't know. No, holy shit. I've never been a 32-year-old man. Oh, fuck this. All right, moving <laughs> on. Anyway, so they go back outside and there's a rainbow. So Ozzy and Alex decide that they want to go see if they can find the gold at the end of the rainbow since there's a leprechaun and he was looking for his gold. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you got to think for a second. <laughs> that leprechaun looked like a demon. Okay, yes. But you know what I took from this little section of this movie? Was, how is there a rainbow, but it didn't rain? Because it's a magical leprechaun rainbow. Follow us here. Come on. Okay, okay, Jeez. okay. Jeez. <laughs> and have you ever been to the end of a rainbow? One time. I don't believe you. One time. There was a club there. It was really nice. Half price drinks. But no gold. Are we talking to actual rainbow? Because I've been to the end of the rainbow, which is a club downtown. Are we? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. When, I don't want to talk about it. But uh, moving on. <laughs> I can only imagine what kind of club that was. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> so they go t- to the end of the rainbow and <laughs> they find some gold. <laughs> And they decide just to take one and um, hide the rest because they're like, you know how adults are about their money. And you know what? It's fucking true, Alex. You are correct. Adults suck. (laughs) That's why as an adult, I've tried to make strives and to spend my money unwisely. Unwisely? Unwisely. Oh, you're good at that. I'm very good at that. How many movies did I buy this month? (laughs) This is why we both still have jobs. Exactly. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> this is I fine. Believe. Everything's I'm fine. fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Oh, so they're trying to determine if the um the gold is real. Um and Ozzy says, I saw this in a movie once. You just bite it to see if it's real. And then he ends up fucking swallowing one of them. <laughs> and I only make this point because it comes up later in the movie. Yes, yes, it did. It, it, it's an it's an important plot twist at the end of the movie. It's a very important. I plot fucking twist. love this movie. <laughs> anyway. Oh, it is so good. <laughs> anyway, you know, I until we watched it this week, I really, I really forgot how much I really do love this movie <laughs> because it is honestly you just tune out. Anyway, so Alex says that they. <laughs> <laughs> that they can take Ozzy to get the operation to fix his brain and make him smart so people will stop making fun of him behind his back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. It was just re- and this is where me and Ozzy share a moment because I feel kind of connected. <laughs> he was like, he's like, people make fun of me? And <laughs> Alex like, is like, oh, God damn. Not to your face. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> It's like, oh, damn, oh, this I feel kid. Like, I feel like that's me. Like <laughs> people just make fun of me all the time. I mean, I'm cool with it. I mean, if y'all want to start a hate Facebook page on me, that'd be oh, wouldn't that be fucking cool? If you stumbled across like, you know, be really creepy though. What? It, that made me think. Remember when you st- stumbled across that Facebook page that someone made of that lady from um, oh, Deadly Women? Oh. Oh yeah, there's a there's a FBI ex profiler or something on that Deadly Women show on ID channel mm-hmm. or whatever. 
Uh, we're talking about TV now. Um, <laughs> but um, no, some I had stumbled across a Facebook page where someone had like taken pictures of their TV and shit. Not even like pulled pictures offline. It was like pictures <laughs> of their fucking TV set. And we're talking about how they were married to her and shit like that. And they I was were, like, like in love with her. I was legitimately concerned. And I was like, should I send this? Like, should I find a way to contact <laughs> this lady this? and tell her? Like, hey, hey. It's a little weird. <laughs> this guy is camping in your underwear drawer or something. <laughs> so w- would you be flattered or would you be freaked out if someone did I'd be this? a little freaked out if somebody did that. You I know, if you want to start group. a Facebook group about me, start a hate group, you know. Not a love group? No, no. Be hating on me. That'd be cool. That'd be cooler. Maybe. I feel like I do. I feel like I've arrived when we get hit. It's like when we got our uh, our first one star review and then we got a three star review. I felt accomplished. <laughs> I was like, wow. Guess what? Oh. Guess what? We're not what? for everybody. No, we aren't. And that's okay. But that means everybody's stumbling across us. So it's a good thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're weird. I'll have to talk to my lawyer about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know everybody's probably like really confused on why we're so giggly. But if you... If you know this movie and you love it, we're trying to kind of match the spirit here. <laughs> so we're just cutting loose because that's what the leprechaun is. We're trying to have a good time. Yeah, here. the leprechaun is a good fucking time. And if you're not having a good time watching, then you're not having a good time in life. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. Because this is not a serious judgy. movie. This is not a serious. I am very judgy when it comes to these movies. I'm protective of them, but I'm also judgy. So if you're walking into the leprechaun expecting Citizen Kane. <laughs> oh, my God. Then fucking stop, because the <laughs> Leprechaun is a good movie, god damn it. Anyway. Leprechaun. So, um, about the coins. They did actually used to bite those back in the day, but uh, but they did it to see if uh, they left marks in the coin. You don't, like, chomp into it. You just kind of, eh. Yes. Like, and uh, w- it would mean a forgery um, if it had marks. Um, no marks means it's real gold. So, um Obviously, in a more formal setting, they would use an acid test where they would drop a small bit of acid on the coin, which um, since gold is a noble metal, uh, it would it won't corrode. Oh, so, yeah. A noble metal. A noble metal. How long did it take you to find? That? I don't know. I paid attention in high school. But wait, you paid attention in high school? I don't believe that. Yes, I did. Or did you noble take metal? Did you take le- leprechaun school? Leprechaun school? Hi, <laughs> welcome to Leprechaun school. So you had to learn about I'm your, your gold? teacher, Mr. Leprechaun. <laughs> now, if you turn to page 32 in your book. You're going to learn about the pot of gold or the end of the rainbow or the fourth leaf clover. At the end of the rainbow is a club downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Half price drinks and everybody thinks wait, you're sexy. Wait, what? <laughs> why do we keep derailing? Oh, no. Because like I said, The Leprechaun is a fun-ass movie, and we're having a fun time on this episode. We're having a fun-ass time. We are having a fun time. <laughs> Just like, uh, okay. I sh- okay, I'll stop. Continue. <laughs> Unpause the movie. <laughs> so Nathan and Tori are painting the house, and she goes to get another can of paint, and the... This is very weird. The leprechaun is under the truck and he's like petting her leg. And she thinks it's Nathan, but I want to know. How many, yeah, how many times have this lady had a man climb under a truck when he's supposed to be behind (laughs) her and pet her leg? Right. Like, is that sexy to you? No, I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) I don't don't understand the under the truck thing. Like, I understand why the leprechaun's doing that. Whatever. But how is she mistaking? She dumb. She dumb. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. (laughs) So, like I said, she thinks it's Nathan, but she turns and sees that it's not him, and she starts to freak out. And they tell her that it's probably just an animal. Of course, they hear a cat, and the cat's, like, stuck in this tree hole, which is really weird. So JD reaches into the tree and gets the cat, tries to get the cat out, and it bites him. Oh. FYI, the cat is the leprechaun. It's the leprechaun because we see him. 
because <laughs> it, it does this camera thing where it shows you inside the knot hole of the tree. <laughs> you see the leprechaun look in his lips. He's like, I'm ready. <laughs> Why is this movie so goddamn great? <laughs> I can't wait for you to edit that. It is so good. You did. The- Ugh. <laughs> Gross. I know you hate it. I do. So they decide that they need to take him, take JD to the ER. But of course the truck won't start. Alex gets out and he <laughs> lifts the hood, fixes it, starts right up and he gets back in the truck. I why wish it was is this simple. like, huh? but, right? But why is this like 10 year old boy having to fix this truck? I know, right? Why aren't they getting out to do it? Because he's like, Alex. Get out there in that dangerous engine and fucking screw around with some shit and make it start. Because he's the most responsible out of all of them. Holy shit. You're right. I think Alex is the adult in the situation. It's pretty fucking sad. The tables have turned. So um, Pretty sad. And that will come up later, by the yes, way. Yes, that's why I <laughs> mentioned is, it. Yes, that will come up later. So uh, this isn't the only Leprechaun Warwick <laughs> would play. In 1998, which is years after this movie and a few of the sequels he got to be a more family friendly leprechaun i don't know whose decision this was to cast him in a family friendly leprechaun movie but uh it was a very unlucky leprechaun and as a fan of terrible fucking movies i gotta say (laughs) that this one takes the goddamn cake this is a very very bad movie but uh, you'll have a good laugh if you come across it because if you light up a J. And just fucking watch this movie. I don't even smoke joints. Why do I always say I'm smoking joints? I smoke a pipe. <laughs> anyway, um, if you light up your pipe <laughs> and watch, it just sounds cooler when I say spark up a J, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound cooler? I, I don't think you need to tell anybody this. Like, Anyway, anyway, <laughs> just, just smoke some weed and watch a very unlucky leprechaun. You'll have a goddamn good time. A goddamn good time. Because it's a fan, a family friendly leprechaun. Oh. The shittiest of leprechaun voices tonight. <laughs> um, But anyway, Warwick doing his leprechaun in a family friendly movie is just. <laughs> good, like, wholesome entertainment. Good, wholesome entertainment. <laughs> so Ozzy and Alex decide to take the gold while, the, while they're in town. Ozzy and, we're here. Right. Ozzy and Alex decide to take the gold coin to a place. I guess it's like a coin place or maybe like a pawn shop or something like that. Uh, yeah. You know, they have these places. It, it is, I think, more of a pawn shop. But it is a really weird pawn shop because it's just like a room. Right. That's what I'm saying is like it might be just a coin place. Yeah. Well, doesn't it say like coins or something? On I don't know. Like I didn't collections. see. I don't know. Anyway. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, uh, this guy, uh, I forget his name, but he's in like, I know, I just interrupted you again. <laughs> Pause the movie. Uh, <laughs> but he's in like, I can't remember. I think he was in the New Heart Show as one of these. Uh, there's these three brothers in the New Heart Show. And two of them don't speak. He's one of the people that don't speak. Anyway, he speaks in this. I don't know why you have that useless information in your brain. <laughs> And why you feel like you need to spew it to the world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so anyway, the guy tells Ozzy and Alex that they need to come back tomorrow because he needs time to like check out this coin. And he tells them that it might be worth $500 or more because it's a. Yeah, he says something about if it's a historical value, then yeah, it's something pri- like could that. be priceless, right? So when he le- when they leave, he goes to pull out a coin book to check out this coin because he's got he's got to do his research, and he hears something in the front of the store. So he goes to check it out, doesn't find anything, and he goes to put the coin in the safe. And the leprechaun's in the safe. <laughs> and he says he wants his, his coin back. And he bites the guy. Uh, then kills him with 
a pogo stick. I, was, I, knew, I knew you would like to hear yes. to say this. Yes, a pogo stick. He finds his pogo stick, goes over to the dude, and starts fucking pogoing on and his the dude's chest. Like, no, no. It's like, why did you roll out of the way? It's a fucking pogo stick. Right. Why did he like <laughs> roll out of the way, kick the leprechaun down? No. He was like, this is how I was meant to go. <laughs> Pogoed this, by a leprechaun. This is the way my life was supposed to oh end. Oh my god. But yeah, the fucking pogo stick. That it <sighs> This movie's great. Sure. This is, this is fucking brilliant. Oh, so I have a question here. Okay. Okay. We haven't touched on this yet. So he cleans the guy's shoes before he leaves. The leprechaun mm-hmm. cleans the guy's shoes. So, and he says something to Ozzy when he busts out of the crate about being a cobbler. Right? Mm-hmm. So, are leprechauns... Leprechauns? Leprechauns. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> are they cobblers? Yes, they're very hard workers. I'll explain that a little later. Oh, why did you hand it like that? Because... <laughs> Because you went to the end of the rainbow. <laughs> Anywho. You did not expect me to say that. I didn't. That was good. Another beer? Another beer. You're going to be drunk by the end of this. That's okay. It's the leprechaun. You're supposed to be drinking during the leprechaun. What kind of sex are we supposed to have later? Drunken, nasty sex. Nasty. <laughs> nasty. So anyway... <laughs> Uh, yes, he finds that little car, which, again, more funniness in a minute. But um, uh, Trimark had a few other cult hits under their belt, such as Warlock, Dolly Dearest, which both we will get to. You know what? Let me just stop this right now and just say any horror movie we're going to get to. So don't worry. We're going to cover <laughs> them all, everybody. Um, in fact, there's a, a, view, or a listener request month coming, and we will announce that oh, soon. Oh, geez. That's going to be hard because... That is going to be hard. I get them all the time. Oh, good. Good. Start taking notes. We, we'll have a an official way that you can submit those, but that, that'll that be announced later. Anyway, so uh, I don't think they could have possibly imagined the status of horror icon they created or, you know, they helped put out with the leprechaun. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, Some people, including myself, make it a yearly tradition to watch this film around or on St. Patty's Day. There's more people than you think watching this as an official St. Patty's Day tradition. I would assume so since it made $8.6 million. Oh, yeah. It's very got a huge cult following. But it works because St. Patty's Day is just a reason to drink for most of us Americans. So the leprechaun has its following in that. So another useless leprechaun fact. Oh, Leprechauns are protect are a protected species under European law, thanks to a group of lobbyists from Carlingford Co. Luth. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a place. Um, apparently, it stems from 1989 when a pub owner discovered a leprechaun suit that is still on display. Okay. And leprechaun hunts in the surrounding area had become such a boom in the economy that they had to protect the lands for those leprechaun hunts. And so they protected the leprechaun under the species why do, list why do to we keep, keep people. F- why do we keep getting this useless leprechaun information? <laughs> this is not what we signed up for. <laughs> this is not leprechaun facts 101. I just feel that since it's St. Patty's Day, we're talking about the leprechaun, and I'm drinking my fair share of St. Patty's Day beer. It's not green. I know. I don't partake in the green beer. That I don't trust things in my beer. But um, <laughs> food coloring. That, I feel like that would taint the beer. <laughs> I don't think. Even so. though right now I'm not drinking fancy beer, everybody. I'm drinking Coors Banquet beer. <laughs> Coors Banquet beer. I'm drinking the Smoking the Bandit <laughs> beer. <laughs> so, um, but. Uh, yeah, leprechauns. So Nathan and Tori are in a restaurant and they're worried about Ozzy and Alex because they said, well, we told them where we were going. Why are they not here yet? And 
as Lee said earlier, the leprechaun is driving down the road in this little car that he <laughs> takes from this pawn shop. Sure. And the police. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Oh, so the police see him and they chase after him in the car. And the leprechaun pulls over. <laughs> And the lever, not the lever gun, the officer, <laughs> the police officer thinks this is a kid with a mask. And he's right, like, come right. on, take your mask off. Right. And then he says something about, should you be out this late? Um, I'm over 600 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. This movie's fucking rocks. <laughs> so the leprechaun grabs his face <laughs> digs his nails into the officer's face and the officer runs off as a leprechaun just like chasing him down the road <laughs> oh, I love watching him walk he's like oh, I don't know is... how to explain it he's like I can't, nobody can see me doing oh, this yeah. <laughs> she's imitating the leprechaun I can't, I can't do it I can't do it we gotta, we gotta stop the podcast I feel like I need to show you what I'm talking oh about. Oh my god! Because I can run like that. We're gonna put a GIF online of you doing. <laughs> no. Or a GIF, whatever the fuck people are calling it. No. But so really, we have to shout out uh, makeup effects artist Gabriel Bartolis. Now Bartolis, uh, before this, he worked on the crew that did Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. Uh, so he worked with Savini, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Wow. <laughs> he would do makeup on Spookies, Brain Damage, Fright Night Part 2, Frankenhooker, <laughs> and he'd go on to do most of the makeup and stuff in the future Leprechaun films. I think he did all the makeup and stuff until Part 5. I think that's where he stopped. How many? Oh, there's eight. I oh. believe there's eight Leprechaun movies. I think. Um, I'm drinking, so I don't really know the numbers right now. But, uh, so Gabriel knows his shit, needless to say. <laughs> But it took about three hours to apply this makeup and about 40 minutes to get it off. And Warwick has said that, like, he had to sit so still because he knew, like, for it to apply right and for him to be able to perform in this heavy makeup. Because mm -hmm. if you've ever seen Warwick Davis without makeup and stuff on, he's he, obviously he's a little person, but also his features are real small. Now, in... It's hard to explain. <laughs> no, I understand. He's what a thin you're... man. I understand. But um, but in the leprechaun makeup, it, it's thick. His face is bigger in the yeah. leprechaun makeup, and so like that's a lot. And so he said that like they would have to come up with all sorts of conversations and stuff. And him, him and Bartolis got real close during this. But um, now it uh, it was Trimark. That contacted Bartolis, uh, who they they wanted him to do like a concept, like at first. But then he his concept was so good that they hired him on, and he pushed more and more gruesome features on this thing because as a horror fan, this is kind of what he'd want to see on the screen. Mm. And I don't know, man. It just, the makeup is great in this. It was great. Like yeah. I gotta say, you know, later sequels you can find some problems with and stuff, but this first movie, it's it's doing what it needs to do, you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, the makeup's great, the effects are fine, everything's great. Like it's just good. It's the leprechaun. I mean <laughs> we'll talk a, we'll touch a little bit on the negativity it got when it first came out, but I, I kinda don't understand what people were thinking they were going to see. They knew this was a murderous leprechaun, right? <laughs> right. What did you think you were going to watch? I have no idea. I'm looking at his little his little family. Oh yeah, he has such a cute family. They're great. I think he lost they had a third child, but I think he lost them you know, Oh, because he had a rare form of, a, I think it was a heart defect that he had that he was born with. Mm -hmm. And it's just real sad. That is really sad. He, um, I might mention it later again, but I'll go ahead and mention it here too. Um, he decided to not do some of the future Leprechaun movies to come back because he said that maybe, and it's not anything against horror or anything like that, but he said he's just not in the mindset, you know? Right, right. And uh, he said maybe when his son 
gets about 18. He said, I might come back and do some more horror. So <laughs> He's just trying to raise his kid. Yeah. So anyway, back to the movie we were actually watching. <laughs> I think it's because, I think we keep going away from this because if we just stayed on this movie and just did a straight, I think we'd just be laughing the entire time. <laughs> this movie's hilarious. So the officer thinks that he loses the leprechaun mm-hmm. in the woods. So he runs off again and the leprechaun's <laughs> messing with him because uh, he's like, because he's a magical leprechaun, so he's jumping back and forth from tree to tree to tree mm-hmm. to tree, and the officer doesn't know where to go or where to look. So he just sits by a tree, and all of a sudden the leprechaun drops down and breaks his neck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> again. Okay, then. <laughs> again, I don't know how we're pulling it off, but we are laughing with this movie tonight. <laughs> Because that's what it is. It's hilarious. It's a great movie. Um, Warwick did most of all his stunts in this movie. Now, he did have Tony Cox, who uh, was his stunt double, and he would uh, appear in Leprechaun 2. But he also had Deep Roy, another stunt double and a very famous little person, um, uh, would go on. He would go on to appear in 2005's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where, with the assistance of computer magic, um, <laughs> he played every single one of the Oompa Loompas in that movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you remember that? Did you ever see that 2005 Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Is it the first one? No, it's uh, oh. the one with Johnny Depp. Oh, yeah. I watched like a millisecond of that, but Johnny Depp was too creepy for me. Oh, I loved it. I don't know. He looked like a child molester. I about said that's why I loved it, but no. <laughs> I just loved how creepy it was without being, you know, because oh, it no, wasn't it was, outwardly creepy. It was creepy. creepy. Yes, it was. Oh, okay. Well, I loved it. But um, <laughs> I, I, I went on a first date to that movie. A first and only date? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because, okay, I thought it was a mistake because she didn't seem to care for it. And then we went to her house. And she had panda stuff everywhere, but not a normal amount of panda stuff, like panda stuff, <laughs> like panda almost wallpaper, panda stuffed animals, panda bedspread, <laughs> panda posters. Was her name Amanda? No, I think it was Shelby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was Shelby. Panda cookie jars. Panda figurines. Panda books. How old was she? Panda earphones, which I don't really even know where you got panda earphones. So that must have been a special order. She was my age. This was high school, 2005. Pandas. <laughs> so it was one of those, uh, yeah, I'll Pandas. call you again. I never spoke to her ever again. <laughs> I went on some weird fucking days. <laughs> wow. I just, I can't with you. I know. I know. <laughs> so back at the restaurant, Nathan's trying to get Tori to eat, but all she wants is some of that D, right? It's not what I was going to say. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> she wants an Evian water and... <clears throat> A Cobb salad. You know, a Cobb salad, I I don't even think it's just a waste of time. I don't know why people eat those. Just order a Caesar or a house salad. Yeah. It's got all the fixings and shit on it. Like, anyway, I know someone's like, what's wrong with a Cobb salad? I've been drinking people. Because anyway. it's just a chunk of lettuce with some blue cheese on it. Yeah, it's. Uh... Anyway. Anyway, and she she tells him that she doesn't eat meat and says it's just a, a cut up dead cow. And Nathan takes her shoe off and says the same thing about her shoe. He said, but this is also a cut up <laughs> dead cow. She's like, it's not the same. <laughs> and this is when Alex and Alzi show up. Ah, uh, some early 90s vegetarian shaming. <laughs> What? She don't eat meat? Well, I never. <laughs> People not eating meat. You remember that? 
I, it happens every day. Well, I don't understand people's offense at people not eating meat. I don't know. It doesn't affect your life. That means more exactly. meat for you, fucker. <laughs> Fuck, exactly. I never understood that. I don't care. <laughs> she don't eat meat. I will tell you another date I went on. Somehow this oh. is turning into the least dating side. Um, dating episode but another date i went on i took this girl now mind you she never said anything and i asked her where would she like to eat oh you choose and so i chose the look on your face <laughs> <laughs> and so i chose um i chose a uh, steakhouse of course you did of course so we get this steakhouse i'm like because I had saved up for this date. I did the right thing. I saved up about $300 out of my oh check. Oh, my God. So we were going all out. I was like, you order whatever you want. I'll pay for it. I got this. You just order whatever you want. He didn't do that for me. It's because I was very poor. And I, I, I tried to kill myself about a month before I met you. <laughs> there was some dark times when you met me. Anyway. She saved my life. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, we get, so we're at the stakes. And she's like, in the middle of all this. Didn't say anything when we pulled up. Didn't say anything while we're waiting to get seated in the steakhouse with the meat looking at you, (laughs) mind you. But when we're at the table, I'm a vegetarian. And and there was just a moment of silence. And, And this is where, this is where you would be like, okay, let's, let's, let's just go. Let's go let's, eat somewhere let's else. Let's go eat yeah. somewhere else then. What does Lee do? <laughs> he orders the 12 ounce ribeye. <laughs> a beer. Oh, not a beer. I order beer now. I have a beer. <laughs> no, 12 ounce ribeye with the steak fries and the baked potato loaded, mind you. And she has a salad. And I eat the steak. <laughs> I bet that bitch never talked to you again. No, we never talked. We never talked again. (laughs) That's good. What's her name? I don't remember. I feel like I need to apologize to her. I don't remember. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) I don't. She's probably living a good life now. That's what I don't understand about some people. They're like, why was he such an asshole? It's like, just move on. It's okay. That guy's an asshole. Don't worry about him. Tell him to fuck off and go have fun. Okay. It's fine. No, uh, seriously, I know you're rolling your eyes because it sounds like I'm being mean, but really, if people and people, mind you, everybody just took more time out of their day to say, fuck that person and move on, (laughs) the world would be a better place. Anyway, the leprechaun is what we're talking about tonight. The leprechaun. I'm trying to say, fuck you and move on, but you won't let me. (laughs) You almost spilled your beer. <laughs> uh, in this diner scene, if you pay attention, you will see Warwick Davis without his makeup sitting next to his wife over. Uh, I, I can't remember where it is. It's all a blink if you miss it during this whole scene uh, because Gabriel Bartolis is sitting like right behind Jennifer Anderson. Oh, OK. Uh, like I said, blink if you miss it. Blink and you miss it. Not blink if you miss it. Boy, that doesn't make any sense, does no, it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> if you blink, you miss it. All right. Um, moving on. Let's not point out my floibles. What? Floibles. Oh. Is that a word? Nope. All right. Moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the leprechaun is back at the house looking for his gold and he finds <laughs> he finds a box. Of Lucky Charms. <laughs> and he decides to eat it, but he doesn't like it. <laughs> I, told I don't you, know if this is funny to anybody uh, else. I told you this movie is fucking brilliant. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, me lucky child. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to straighten up here. Huh? Okay. Woo. Sorry, guys. Woo. I'm sorry, listeners. Oh, 
you, they probably were like, this is not fucking funny. What like, is this <laughs> bullshit? I just heard some really deeply moving conversation on the last episode. What's, can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine someone just starting with last week's episode, which, you know, we do those from time to time. We do some really kind of deep conversations where we're serious about it. And then them going to this week's episode, <laughs> because we also do episodes like this, uh, refer back to our uh, thanks killing episode. <laughs> nice. That was a good one. Nice. So sorry. Anyway. So he gathers all the shoes in the house and he decides he needs to shine them because he's a cobbler and that's what they do. <laughs> so so General Mills actually gave permission to the filmmakers to use the brand Lucky Charms. Now, of course, when they saw the finished film, they revoked their permission. So that's why this uh, box of Lucky Charms really isn't Lucky Charms. It's, um, oh, I don't, I don't remember what it's called, but it's not Lucky Charms. It's a spoof. Um, <laughs> it, 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 to get back at General Mills towards the end of the movie, the line was originally that Alex says when he kills the leprechaun, it was originally supposed to say your luck just ran out. Did you just, uh, give away the ending? Yes. But I'm hoping you guys have watched the leprechaun <laughs> before you watch this or listen to this episode. Um, but that's why they changed that line to fuck you lucky charms at the end of the movie. Oh yeah. Um, so another leprechaun fact. Oh my God. Leprechauns are known to be very hardworking creatures. They do really enjoy mending shoes and just pulling their weight, you know, around the leprechaun casa. Well, as we all do, leprechauns tend to unwind after a hard day's work by drinking some alcoholic refreshments. Okay, I'm trying not to laugh. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you this and not laugh, but now apparently the leprechaun becomes mischievous when they drink like we all do <laughs> um and there are stories of leprechauns hopping on the back of farm animals and riding them through the countryside yes <laughs> yes if i was a leprechaun i would totally fucking do that too i'm so sorry my laugh is like hyena everyone but <laughs> you know how okay you know how many times I I hopped on the back of this pig. You know how many times I've wanted to like hop on a cow? Well, your mom has a farm and I'm like, I bet you I could ride that pig. <laughs> I bet you don't want to. Ah! You know what happens when you fall off of it, right? Oh, it's gonna eat me. Yeah. Oh shit, never mind. Yeah. That's why we have a pig farm. Anyway. I love your mom because she gets me. <laughs> because her uh, one of her pigs died. Or they killed it. I can't remember. Did, they, did it die? It it died. They were going to kill it because it was sick. Oh, yeah. Um, but it died before they got to yeah, it. Yeah, it died. Uh, she brought me a piece of its jawbone. <laughs> so I was like, you get me. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> Thank you for this jawbone. Yeah, she told me. She was like, I'm going to give this to him. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, sweet. We were just walking through the yard one day. She was like, oh, yeah, give this to him. I was like, Yeah, what? so I have a piece of a pig jawbone on my desk right now but anyway yes leprechauns are known to ride farm animals so how why do you know all of these leprechaun facts i couldn't tell you leprechaun school i'm not you saying went, no you went there <laughs> welcome to leprechaun school Today we're learning how to shine a bed book. I can't even do the accent now. I can't even do it. Did you have too much to drink? I've had too much to drink, yes. So, everybody comes back to the house and they see that it's all torn up. There's like food everywhere and stuff. And the shoes are on the table. Right, right. And Nathan says it could have been a bear. And uh, Ozzy said... It was the leprechaun since he signed all the shoes. So they decide to clean everything up and they get it all clean and they hear this bell. Ting, 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 ting. And actually, it's Ozzy. <laughs> He's playing with the toy bell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry just to freak everybody out. And so, again, Tori with this fucking bratty ass shit is going to stay at a hotel. You know, just let her. 
<laughs> just go to a hotel. I know. I'm point. feeling so. <laughs> Nathan's trying to talk her out of staying at the hotel, and Ozzy and Alex are talking about killing the leprechaun. And Alex describes how he would kill him with a gun if he had one. Yeah, saying something about a 357 <laughs> magnet, put it a little green fucker's head in. <laughs> it's like, whoa. This little kid's very. Huh, whoa, buddy. Whoa. <laughs> And again, they hear this bell, but this time it's not Ozzy. So Nathan goes outside to check it out. Of course, like every horror movie, he falls. <laughs> oh, the guy, though, this time, the guy falls. The guy, yeah. But yeah. he lands on a bear trap. Because, ouch. <laughs> of course, the leprechaun is out there taunting him. And he has this axe. Nathan and him start to fight. Nathan's got this big like flashlight. Mm -hmm. The leprechaun has the axe. And Nathan's like trying to hit him with the <laughs> the flashlight. Everyone that's inside hears everything, all the commotion going on outside. So they go outside to check it out. <laughs> this movie was filmed partly at the same studio where Terminator 2 was filmed. Why is this so funny? Because Terminator 2 is like a major blockbuster movie. And then it's just like the leprechaun gets filmed there, too. It's really funny. Uh, but some of the other scenes of this movie were filmed at Big Sky Ranch. Now, if you guys know your television history, you'll know Big Sky Ranch, which nobody knows any of this. But um, a Big Sky Ranch is where they filmed uh, Little House on the Prairie okay. and The Waltons. Um, some nice wholesome family shows and now um it's just and now little, they brought in this little yes. green fucker it's just hilarious to think a little leprechaun was murdering people where john boy <laughs> was saying good night to the family <laughs> oh you know even warwick davis said he was like it kind of felt a little uh a little blasphemous here <laughs> It's just not right. It's just not right. It's not right. So everybody comes outside and I guess the leprechaun had run off because now they're out there like trying to help Nathan and the leprechaun runs up and bites him. And Alex is trying to hit him with a rock, but he just doesn't stop. <laughs> like <laughs> he's a strong little fucker. He really is. And Ozzy goes inside and he calls 911. <laughs> but apparently <laughs> apparently this happens so often that they're like oh it was just ozzy a Stuck. leprechaun again <laughs> talking about a leprechaun this time they were like wasn't yesterday about aliens or something like that <laughs> yeah but this time's <laughs> this time it's real it's a leprechaun so they don't believe him and they're not right, they're right. not coming to help alex finds his gun and um, gives it to Nathan and sh he shoots the leprechaun a few times. Tori's trying to get the bear trap off of Nathan's leg, stumbles over and shoots the leprechaun like five more times. But the leprechaun is gone. So he was shooting <laughs> at nothing. So they take Nathan back in the house and the phone lines are dead. And it looks like but I could be wrong. It looked like all the power was out. Uh, yeah, I think it was. So they're like, okay, we're going to have to do this ourselves. We're going to have to take the bear trap off of his leg. <laughs> and then then they're going to get in the truck and they're going to take him to the hospital. Why they have to take the bear trap off of his leg, I have no idea. You know, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'd probably want that fucker off my leg. Yeah, but his ass was walking around with it on his leg. He went over and shot a leprechaun and then walked back in the house. Ugh, I don't so know. So he can't walk to I the truck? Know. Did the leprechaun set this bear trap? Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> oh. Anyway, <laughs> they get in. I assume they take the bear trap off of his leg. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They, they didn't don't explain that. They go to the truck and it doesn't start. And you know what they do? They send the little kid out. They send Alex out. There's uh, this fucking ravage, like, <laughs> leprechaun on the loose. We've established this is a bloodthirsty <laughs> leprechaun. <laughs> but let's send the little one out there to fix the, the, the thing. Maybe he'll be all right. <laughs> and this little fucker, the whole time I'm like, you could move a little faster. You could move a little faster. Because I saw you do it before a couple scenes ago. 
I know it only takes you four seconds to do it. So why are you taking 10 fucking years to do this? Why am I growing a beard? <laughs> anyway, sorry. That was my little tangent. <laughs> so, of course, the leprechaun's under the hood. <laughs> <laughs> fucking love it. <laughs> so Alex gets back in the truck. They lock all the doors, but the leprechaun punches through the windshield. Tori gets this bright idea to burn him with the cigarette lighter, and she like pushes it into his nose, and he runs off. Leprechaun fact. Oh, in Portland, Oregon, there is a mill. I'm sorry, there is Mill Inns Park, a leprechaun colony. It started in 1948 when a hole that was intended for a light pole remained empty and sprouted weeds. Dick Fagan, yes, that's his name, a columnist for the Oregon Journal, planted flowers in the hole and named it after his column, Mill Ends. How does any of this relate to this movie? Leprechauns. But leprechauns ain't real, bro. Leprechauns. They are protected. I understand you already told me that fact. So if they're protected, that must mean they're real. No. Leprechauns. Are unicorns real? They could be. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not real. Okay, Bigfoot. (laughs) Again. Oh, I can't say anything. You can't prove (laughs) that Bigfoot doesn't exist. (laughs) I'm sorry, everybody. I I can't do this anymore. Oh, getting serious. I can't say anything, though, because Nessie. We've had a lot of talks about the Loch Ness we have. Monster. Do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Yes. Wow, weird. We, well, you know, you I know, mean, it's, you know, it's really weird. We've never actually sat down and talked about what we believe and what we don't believe. We've had conversations about it. Sort of. I mean, you know, I'm an atheist. But oh, we, we've had that talk. Yeah, we've had the talk. Oh, you got it. Okay, when you're an atheist, you really do have to have a talk with people. About that kind of thing. Like, you kind of got to let that be known. Because not that I'm, like, out here, like, rah, 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 atheist. Oh. But um, <laughs> maybe behind closed doors. But, um, no, like, uh, you really got to let somebody know that <laughs> if they're wanting to be close to you and stuff. Like, oh, well, you know, I don't believe. So if that's a problem, you know. Right. Go on. Which, again, like I said, I'm not a fucking militant person. So, like, whatever you want to believe or disbelieve is all cool with me. Right. I, right. I'll, fuck, I'll fight for your rights to believe what you want to believe, you know? <laughs> right. Right. We got to fight. Anyway. For right to part. Leprechaun. Oh, God. Anyway. All right, all right. As you are atheist, I am nothing. Well, I am what I am. But I tell people. Because they're always like, well, exactly. oh, you got to pray for people. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't pray, but I do believe in good vibes. Oh, that's cool, too. That's how I am. I'm like, you put the I'm positive just, out there, you get the positive back. My thing is, I'm just I'm just trying to be a human being and help people out. Tonight, you're helping people learn about leprechauns. Exactly. And annoying Leprechaun the fuck facts. out of your wife. This is important. <laughs> annoying the fuck out of your wife? <laughs> Hey, we had a heavy episode last week. We got to get a little silly. Anyway. (laughs) So. (laughs) This is where the leprechaun has his little car and he busts through the (laughs) barn with it. No, no, you're leaving it out because it's not the normal little car from earlier. It's a car. He goes into the shed. I guess he makes it. Yeah. Yes. And you hear him in there working because you hear (laughs) fucking sawing. And you hear drills? I wasn't paying that much attention. It's like a goddamn cartoon. <laughs> and then he busts out with this little homemade vehicle with a pitchfork on the end. He's like, ah! Then he like rams it into the truck. <laughs> and it must be really mighty because this truck fucking rolls like three fucking times. There's two, three. Okay, there's Nathan. Yeah, there's a bunch Tori, of people in this car. Ozzy. And Alex and, and in this truck, and it fucking rolls. And bless Warwick Davis for deciding that the leprechaun needs to be a little bit more funnier. <laughs> uh, Mark Jones wanted to do a straight horror movie, but uh, Warwick Davis was, I guess, he just looked at this and was like, hey, man. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this is a fucking leprechaun. <laughs> this is funny. We got to put some comedy in this shit because I know, I think a lot of people. And we'll talk about it later, but like, I think a lot of people, 
weren't expecting a funny movie with this. So, mm, I guess not. Whatever. It's you told great. me about this movie, and I'm like, it's fucking great. That's yeah, gonna be that's funny. A funny movie. Yeah, you're like, that's gonna be funny. <laughs> Oh, so he rolls this truck. <laughs> By the time he gets over to check on them, because he wants to see if they're dead, they're all out of the truck. They try to run back in the house. And it, it, he almost catches them, but they shut his hand in the door. This was a little weird to me. But when they shut the hand, his hand in the door, it falls off. <laughs> <laughs> and it like is like crawling on the door. And well, stuff. leprechauns are, are mighty, but they're also soft. Apparently, <laughs> it was a little weird to me. I don't know. I just, just enjoyed it. <laughs> but so like the hand is like still moving and it crawls under the door and he like picks it up. He's like, OK, and gets his hand back. I'm like what? <laughs> so Tori remembers that she has a cell phone. One of those big. Oh, my God. Cell the phones. cell phone is huge. It really took me back. <laughs> yes. like, because it's funny because. The way they portray her as rich at the beginning of the movie is she has this big ass cell phone in her hand because really only the really rich kind of had. Well, I mean, I don't know. I was dirt ass poor back in 93. So, but you like were only like five. We were very poor back oh, in 93. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so like that's how you told wealth. It's like this fucking giant ass cell phone. And I was like, good Lord, look at the size of that cell phone. Oh, when we yeah. watch this. Oh, yeah. So, uh. She calls 911 and the battery dies in the middle of the call. <laughs> okay. So a problem I was having was the setting of this film. Now I realize this was shot in California, but as I was making sure what I spew out during the show is accurate, <laughs> because yes, we do fact check here on Night of the Horror File. A little but bit. A little bit. <laughs> At uh, least we become the IMDb trivia board, which if you've if you've been on there, oh my god, it's so inaccurate. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I like to go on there when whatever movie we're doing and just sit there and pick out what's wrong. I'll be like, nope, no, <laughs> not true. <laughs> That's not a thing. Um, but what I kept stumbling across were things saying that this takes place in North Dakota. Now you said at the beginning of the movie and. I thought I was fucking losing my mind. That's why. <laughs> and I asked you in the middle of my fact checking. I was like, what did she say this? They were. And you were like, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> why does everybody think this took place in North Dakota? I don't and know. And I couldn't find a fucking reason. There are no reasons for it. Just somebody decided this take place in North Dakota, but that wouldn't make any sense. Have you fuckers seen North Dakota? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like this. It looked like New Mexico to me. Yeah. I've, I've been in New And Mexico. I think that's why they said it in New Mexico, because California looks more like New Mexico than it does North Dakota. North Dakota has a lot of mountains. Yes. And trees. A right. lot of trees. Um, Not desert. But God Damn it. Like I said, Jennifer Aniston told us where this fucking took place. And how the fuck did this leprechaun get through customs? <laughs> I mean, I, I get. Don't okay. understand. I okay. don't understand why you're saying through customs. OK, I guess. Did he fly? Well, they came from Ireland. He's got to get checked out. They got to make sure they don't have any fruits. Who's they? The whoever that's checking the baggage. Anyway. No, who flew from Ireland? Ireland. Dan O'Brady. Oh, it's not his name. Anyway. Simon O'Malley. I don't, um, <laughs> but the, uh, okay, so, <laughs> how the, what the fuck? <laughs> how, okay, another question I have is why would Pappy O'Shea transplant <laughs> from Ireland to North Dakota or New Mexico? Why either of those? Why not New York? I don't know. Why? I didn't make this movie. And how? How the fuck did the leprechaun get through customs? <laughs> and, okay, okay, hang on, now that I'm thinking about it, he can teleport. He's magic. Yeah, that's true. Which brings me to another leprechaun fact. No. So if you ever see a leprechaun in person, don't ever take your eye off of it, because it will disappear. So maybe that clears up the problem of how the leprechaun got through customs. Can you go get me a pen? 
I got I need one to, right here. Yeah, I need to write some facts real quick. Can I have this? No. <laughs> it's just a fact. You're trying to get out of this relationship, <laughs> and I'm telling you no. That's not how it works. It is exactly Kill how it works. <laughs> wow. Because who am I going to tell leprechaun facts to? <laughs> not these people, because they're probably shutting us off right now. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? Dude, I thought this was a horror movie podcast. This guy is like spewing out leprechaun facts. And it's just weird. I don't know what to talk about. Anyway, Tori got enough information out to the sheriff to tell them like where she's at. Kind of what's going on. And the sheriff tries to call out to the officer that we saw earlier in the movie. The leprechaun... Is sitting in the police car, <laughs> pretending to be this officer because he can imitate voices or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the officer's just sitting next to him all dead and shit. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'll be right over there. Oh, that's blah, good blah, shit. Blah, blah. So during their little uh, car attack or whatever, when the leprechaun like punched through the window, he had hurt Ozzy's ear. And Ozzy really thought that the leprechaun like took his ear. Yeah, yeah, because earlier in the movie, he was like, when the leprechaun busts out of the crate, he tells Ozzy he's going to make a boot out of his ear. Oh, okay. And, le- and Ozzy's like, I, I bet that leprechaun's making a boot out of my ear right now. <laughs> Tori's like, no, your ear is oh. fine. And she's like, How wrapping the fuck it up. would he make a boot out of- <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So she's like fixing him up or whatever. And they've been waiting and waiting on the police. Nathan's over there looking like he's going to die. He's all pale and sweaty. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. (laughs) That bear trap fucked that dude up. And Ozzy says something. Oh, because he had said something about the leprechaun making his. I'm making a boot out of his ear. But anyway, um, she's like, the leprechaun's not real. (laughs) (laughs) So he slips up and tells her about the gold that they had found. Right. And Tori decides that she's going to go get the gold because they had hit it in the well. Nathan gives her the gun to protect herself. And he's like, do you know how to use this? She's like, no. And like cocks it back. It's like, oh, okay. Okay. You didn't have to say no. You could have just, yeah, I know. Bye. Hey, fuck you. (laughs) I don't eat meat. Why the fuck are you giving me shit about it? I have a gun now. So she goes outside to find the gold, and of course, the leprechaun shows up, (laughs) and she gives him the gold, and he is happier than a motherfucker. He even kisses her, (laughs) and then she runs off, and she goes inside, and she tells them that they can leave now, because they want to go to the hospital. Right. Get everybody fixed up. (laughs) Now, okay- if, if you can't already tell, I, I fucking love this movie. <laughs> but I got to say, if they would have just listened to Ozzy and given the leprechaun his gold, that this all probably would have been okay. Right. And maybe they, I don't know, maybe they could have had the leprechaun make them some new shoes or some shit. <laughs> sure, he's murdering folks, but is he really evil? Yes. I mean, if Lester McSandy came to my country, stole my gold, and hightailed it north of Cala, Mexico, I'd be pissed too. His name is Dan O'Grady. Dan O'Grady. Say it with me. Dan O'Grady. Famo shade. Ah! That beer had beer in it. <laughs> okay, whatever. Slim Shady. Let's just move on. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. I'm just going to take this lighter. I'm going to light this fucker on fire. <laughs> and I'm going to leave. <laughs> well, I'm going to set on fire and I'm going to hurry and get some pants. And then I'm going to uh, leave. I'm going to hurry and get some pants. Yeah, she's naked right now. It's pretty awesome. I'm not naked. <laughs> no. Anywho. <laughs> Flam flam o matey. Right. I'm going to shove this microphone stand. So far up your asshole. Slim slam most shady. <laughs> anyway. The leprechaun's outside and he's counting his gold. And he realizes that he's one short. And this is when I realized that this is the one that Ozzy swallowed. And he goes in the house and attacks Alex. 
or Alex somehow like pushes him onto this hot stove and he burns his hand. Did someone turn on the stove at some point? I guess. Point? I was confused. Because <laughs> I thought the power was out, too. I don't. I was very confused. <laughs> yeah. clam o <laughs> Ah, don't hit me. She's hitting me. It's I abuse. I was just trying to take your paper, okay? <laughs> Dramatic. Then he's, like, hiding in the cabinets, and they keep going over, and, um opening the cabinets and then he's not there and then all of a sudden he jumps out of one of these drawers and (laughs) and grabs nathan's balls oh i fucking love it and um so he keeps like jumping around the cabinets and stuff since they have a gun he knows that they're gonna shoot him all of a sudden he comes down the chimney and nathan shoots him and he's laying there not moving and they're kind of like what the hell like is he dead is he not dead and then he jumps up and runs off and they hear this weird noise and this is my favorite part in the whole world (laughs) down the hallway (laughs) the leprechaun's on the skateboard (laughs) and he's just going up and down the hallway (laughs) oh jesus yeah this is my favorite part oh my lord anyway so he, they hear this weird noise from under the floor, and he busts to the floor. Then the phone rings. So Tori answers it, and it's the Leprechaun asking for his gold. <laughs> so she rips this door or this door. She rips this phone off the wall and throws it, and it rings again. Tell me why this bitch fucking answers the phone. (laughs) Same reason why what's her name answers the phone in a nightmare on Elm Street. (laughs) Nancy. So speaking of nightmare on Elm Street, Uh they take this little bit from this Mm -hmm. because she answers the phone again. And this little leprechaun hand. Where's me (laughs) go? This hand comes out of the speaker. (laughs) Oh, my God. This movie. (laughs) All right, you know how I said Citizen Kane earlier? Yes. You know what? This Take movie's it. brilliant. <laughs> it's the Citizen Kane of horror movies. I think... Oh, man. I swear. You know, Warwick Davis really started regretting making the film after it was finished. Especially when the reviews came in. Because... The reviews were very negative. Uh, But when he found out that horror fans loved this movie and it became a cult classic and it also spawned like five sequels, it has become one of his favorite movies he worked on. Um, Plus, I I think it's awesome because you really you honestly get a sense of Warwick's range here. I mean, because really the only time we really and I might be quoting out of my ass because, you know, I don't remember much about Warwick's work other than Willow and uh, Wicked the Ewok and some other little roles he played. But like, you really get a sense of his range in this because he's fucking menacing, but he's also hilarious. Oh, yeah, for sure. Man. Oh, yeah. I would have to agree. <laughs> So Ozzy remembers that he ate the gold coin. He suggests that they go ask O'Grady. O'Fady. How to get rid of the leprechaun. Lim lam O'Mady. It's at this point that I decided that really Ozzy just needs to take a big old fucking dump. (laughs) All of this would be over if he would just take a shit. It's true. It's true. Because if, like, Ozzy was like, ah, hey, look, I shit it out. Here's your gold. I bet the leprechaun would even dig through the shit. I don't know. He made it, made it. Ozzy, clean that off. Clean that shit off. I don't know. I think he would want his gold. I think he would want his gold bad enough that he would clean off the shit. Not clean it off in the river water. God damn it. (laughs) It's been a long night. That dude's fucking bleeding. You might want to get him to the hospital. Anyway, Ozzy just needs to take a shit. <laughs> they run out and they go to um, JD's Jeep, which why didn't they take their Jeep before? When they knew this truck was fucked up, why didn't they try to take the Jeep before? 
Oh, yeah, that never occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't to me either until just now. They're trying to distract the leprechaun by throwing shoes at him. And every time the shoe gets thrown at him, he has to clean it. Oh, my God. Like a little OCD person. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so Tori drives off and the guys um, go back in the house. And the leprechaun has roller skates on now. <laughs> And he's chasing her down the road with his little roller skates. Oh, that's so good. (laughs) So Tori goes to the nursing home where Mr. O'Grady is. And as she's looking for the room, she sees a shadow from the broom closet. And it looks like the leprechaun. And she stops for a minute. She's like staring. And I'm like... Oh. How did they get a mop and a broom <laughs> to look like a leprechaun? <laughs> Have you ever been anywhere where like that looks like a fucking leprechaun? No, not one time. <laughs> oh, <sighs> anyway, oh, bless this film. Bless this bless film. <laughs> so good. So she goes to talk to Mister O'Grady, and he's facing away from her, and she's kind of talking to him or whatever. And then the wheelchair turns around and it's the leprechaun. (laughs) And so. What did you expect? And so begins one of my favorite horror movie scenes. (laughs) The wheelchair sequence. (laughs) (laughs) Every time I watch this, it makes me laugh so hard. Like there has been times where I've rewatched this movie. Like I said, I do it once a year. I rewatched this movie and I laughed so hard. I pause it for a minute just to give myself a little time to catch up. But um, Aniston had to run a little slower than normal here because. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because Warwick, as a little person, he was having trouble uh, manipulating the wheels on a full size wheelchair. In fact, if you pay attention during the scene, you can see his legs are fake. Which means he's probably. Oh. Um, kneeling now I don't know this for sure but if you watch it uh, that's probably what's happening he's probably either kneeling or maybe somewhat squatting in this wheelchair so his his arms are able to reach the wheels so he can oh, yeah. manipulate them right anyway they did that made it a little slower and just kind of filmed it in fast motion and all together when all when all said and done it makes for the funniest fucking scene i've ever i wish that i could go that fast in a wheelchair like i've been in a lot of wheelchairs in my life not that i like need them but i love to play in wheelchairs who doesn't love to play in a wheelchair? oh yeah do you ever do that thing where you like tilt back on the wheels and like no balance yourself no. yeah i did that no i did that i ain't got the balls for that because then i end up in the wheelchair like because i broke myself or something oh, yeah. so he chases her down the hall And she runs, she makes it to this elevator and the door closes and Mr. O'Grady, Mr. O'Grady, Flip Jack McGrady, falls through the ceiling. It's funny that you call him Flip Jack. (laughs) And uh, she asks him how to kill the leprechaun and he says that she needs to find the four leaf clover and put it on his body. So Tori hurries back and drives to the clover patch the clover patch (laughs) the clover patch the official clover patch. like remember when i said it was a one in ten thousand chance you'd find a four leaf clover have you ever found one in your life not that i can recall i've found two okay and the reason why i know that number is because it's so rare that i remember when i found them and where i found them (laughs) So as she's trying to dig through this clover patch, the leprechaun grabs her. So she runs off and he chases her. And of course she falls at one point because bitches always be tripping. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he stops chasing her. And then she sees the cop car with the lights going. So she goes down to get help and she sees the dead officer (laughs) and the leprechaun tries to attack her she grabs grabs the officer's like baton uh-huh. thing and shoves it into the leprechaun's eye and so this makes him rip the door off the car the leprechaun goes over and takes the officer the dead officer's eye out and puts it in his eye socket <laughs> 
This is the creepiest thing ever. It's pretty fucking weird. It's pretty weird. And all of a sudden, Nathan shows up and he shoots a leprechaun and they go to the clover patch to get a clover. They all go over there because she tells them that they need to. So Alex um, is kind of by the house and he finds another bear trap and he grabs it. He said he isn't afraid and he's going to kill the leprechaun. The leprechaun is watching him from afar, obviously. Right, right. And Tori is just ready to give up trying to find this clover. And Ozzy says that she has to believe. You have to believe we can do this. You know. You know what? He could have just taken a big old dump and they wouldn't have to do any of this. You have the key to ending all this, Ozzy. Just go take a shit. Go and take a shit. Go take yourself a poo-poo and then dig in that poo-poo. And find the Google. <laughs> the Google. So she like, she says that she's like, fine, I believe, like all sarcastically. And then magically she finds a clover. The leprechaun grabs Alex and tries to put him in the bear trap. Ozzy busts in. Oh, because they're like in the barn thing. Yeah, yeah. And Ozzy busts in and says that it's him that he wants. He's like, it's me that you want. And um, so he chases Ozzy and starts to slap him. <laughs> he's kind of but cutting him up. Dude. He's like cutting him at the same time. Yeah. And Alex has the clover and he slingshots it right into the leprechaun's mouth saying, fuck you, lucky charms. <laughs> and the leprechaun starts to like melt from yeah. the inside out. You know, four leaf clover. And as he does this, he, like, falls into the well. And they think it's all over. The leprechaun's gone. But he crawls back up the well. <laughs> oh, melty. I want me gold. <laughs> and Nathan hits him with the gun and then pours gas down the well. And he sets it on fire. And this causes this huge explosion. And I have to say, if they were anywhere near that well when that happened... They would have been burnt to a crisp. So this was a damn lie. A whole damn fucking lie. (laughs) Wow, you're really offended by this. Because it was annoying that it was fake. I was just hurt that they killed the leprechaun. I'm sorry. Obviously, he's not dead. Am I the weirdest person to to be like, oh, leprechaun's dead? Yes. Well, now the fun's ended. (laughs) Which I will say, when we get to the sequels... They make it all about the leprechaun, and it's fucking amazing. Anyway. You don't got to worry about none of the characters. You just worry about that leprechaun. (laughs) You have a good time. So now the sun is coming up, and the cops finally show the fuck up. Where have you been the last 12 fucking hours? Anyway. (laughs) Then we get the shot of the burning well, and we hear the leprechaun say that he wants his gold. I want me gold. And then... It's Opa. Ah, ha, ha, the leprechaun. <laughs> so leading up to this film, Trimark uh, wanted to do some tie-ins, but corporate headquarters, such as Domino's, who they were contacting, <laughs> weren't so interested in having a little murderous leprechaun involved in selling pizzas. So Trimark got aggressive, however, and approached some individual franchises. Um, and operators agreed. And a coupon was included with free popcorn and a drink if you went and saw the leprechaun. I mean, that's what you would need to get they, me to get. They even convinced yeah. Subway franchises to do this, too. So there was a lot of tie-ins for the leprechaun in 1993. <laughs> um, and you know what? It sounds funny, but that may have fucking helped. <laughs> because like I said at the top of the show. This film made an ass ton of fucking money. Uh, It's amazing how much money this made. Because like some critics said, sure, this movie probably should have been direct-to-video. Let's face it. It's a direct-to-video. It's perfect Mm -hmm. for direct-to-video. But this got put out in theaters. (laughs) So, and and now theater goers were mixed a little bit. Uh, More people enjoyed this movie than hated it. Um... Only because it was funny, probably. Oh, yeah. Because the comedy really makes up for it. If if you're going. 
I would say if you're not at least having a good time watching this movie, that something's kind of wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to dislike a movie. We right, always say that right. on the show. But um, like I said, they're mixed. And and most enjoyed it. But critically, this film was panned like a motherfucker. Uh, in fact, one critic said it was a waste of perfectly good Kodak film, which leads me to a question we keep asking on here. Where did the film touch you? Show me on the doll. <laughs> Again, why are people so offended? <laughs> like, I have no anyway, idea. That's a question that never will be answered. But like most movies, this went on to have a huge cult following. Huge. In fact, it has had its share of sequels, like I've said. And this has worked into like film festivals and stuff. People have a good time with this movie. All these films are just meant to fucking enjoy. Uh, you grab a beer or a joint, fire it up, and have a good fucking time. You got a nice balance of horror and comedy. See, it's a horror comedy. Right. And I, I got, I, I promise you, if you watch this movie, you're going to have a good time. But the question is, did you have a good time watching this? I did. I had a, a lot of fun watching this. It was uh, one of the first movies that I've watched all the way through, I think. Like, I don't think I paused it at all. Good job. <laughs> yeah, because, um, you know, it's no secret. Uh, Brittany's not the biggest horror fan out there, you know, and that's fine. That's the that's the appeal of our show. <laughs> um, she's an outsider who's looking in. Yeah. And that's good. But, um, and it kind of gives, you know, people who don't obsess about horror like I do. Right. It kind of gives them a reason to look at these movies, kind of watch them, right. enjoy them. It's a fine. Fresh, a fresh perspective. It's fine. You don't have to enjoy, well, you don't have to fucking obsess about these movies. Right. You can just right. enjoy them for what they are. And, um, but with, in your case, would this be a repeat watch? I mean, I'd watch it, like you said, like once a year. See? See? Yeah, yeah it's a good once a yeah. year watch. And I got to say, like, being an outsider looking in on all of this, if I would have watched this a year ago before it started really, like, before we started the podcast and stuff like that, I think that I would have overlooked it. Well, and that's the thing. And not that's, appreciated it for what it is. That's why, even though, you know, we have a madcap sense of, like, direction on this show, we don't <laughs> really... We do have, like, sort of theme months. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we just pick and choose. And uh, most of the time, it's me picking. Because, like, I'm trying to ease you into something. Right. Because I think right. on our earliest episode, we talked about how we watched uh, Adam Green and... uh What's his name's uh, the movie uh, Chillerama? Right, that was our very first movie we ever watched. And we and I chose that movie to do, but at the same time it was a mistake because you have never watched any of the horror movies that it draws from. Right, and that's why I was mad because you're like, there's so many themes, and I'm like, I don't understand any of and it. And that was super interesting to me because I was like, okay, this actually helped. <laughs> now I know where to start you. Right. So it's like going through this movies, it's it's so interesting to see your reactions to these. Right. Like with this one, you were fucking laughing the whole <laughs> entire time. Yeah. And that's what everybody else does. Right. Like I said, these movies are meant to enjoy. But. I enjoyed it. Yes. And that's 1993's Leprechaun. And I think we had a really fucking good time tonight with that. But. Next week, what do we got on the show? Friday the 13th, part two. That's right. We are going into sequel territory. Is this the first dun, sequel dun, we've dun. done? No. No? What's uh, What's another sequel? Do you we remember? did Prom Night 2. Hmm. But we didn't watch the first one first. That's right, because I said you don't actually have to watch that first one. Right. Really get the right. second one. And you don't. But, um, yeah, this is the first, because we did Friday the 13th. But now we're doing part two, so this is the first sequel nice. to the movie. This will be nice. And it's on Friday the 13th. Da, da, da. So awesome stuff. But 
Until next time. I'm Lee Evans. Oh. The leprechaun expert. (laughs) Say and stay spooky. I'm sorry. This is pretty. Stay horrific. Uh, Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Night of the Horror File. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Used with permission. Purchase John's music at babtechno.com. Remember, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and the Slasher app. For info on how to get a hold of us, visit our website at nightofthehorrorfile.com. Don't forget to rate and review the show wherever you listen. It helps us out a ton. See you next time. I want me gold. Dirty, 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 dirty.